Hey everybody, this is MoBaller12 here to help quench that knowledge thirst. For this video, I'll be specifically talking about alpha halogenations. If you guys recall from, I believe it was two weeks ago, I talked about alpha halogenations on under acidic conditions. So for this video, I'll be talking about alpha halogenations under basic conditions. So we'll be talking on the flip side about this you know, topic. Um, quick little heads up, again, Facebook fan page link in the description box below. Show your love and support, like the fan page, tell your friends and family about it. Let's help spread the word uh, about Mobile or 12. Also, um, just a quick little heads up about my videos. As you guys recall, I used to upload an organic chemistry and general chemistry video on Mondays and Fridays. So I'd upload two videos every week, a series of videos or whatever it may have been. It was twice a week, Mondays and Fridays, and I stopped doing that. Um, because I've been really busy and I haven't had time to, you know, really devote uh, much time to making videos. So I, so I started only uploading videos on Mondays, which were organic chemistry videos. So Mondays have become, you know, a really hectic day for me. So I'll be uploading videos, which will be organic chemistry, because I want to get done with this topic. I'll be uploading videos on the weekends now, okay? And um, I won't be uploading like two videos like I used to um, again because I just don't have the time you know I don't have enough time to make these videos because it, it does take a lot of effort and time to you know edit and fix all these things but nonetheless um, expect videos to be uploaded on the weekend so today is I believe Saturday yeah it's Saturday and um, here here's your guys videos on alpha halogenations so uh, let's get started on this topic, okay? So that's just a little quick heads up, okay? So let's get started on this topic, okay? Um, so there's a little note I have up top. It says, under basic conditions, you replace all alpha H's with your halogen, okay? So you assume an excess amount of your halogen, your reagents you have here, and you replace every single one of your alpha H's. Every single one. There's no exception to the rule. Every single one. And we'll talk a little bit about why that is possible a little bit later when we look at the mechanism um, let's see um, anything else or oh, let's just do a quick little review of what the alpha H's are and what what, what is the alpha position okay so we're gonna look and again these reactions typically typically occur with you know aldehydes or ketones there may, there may be other uh, carbonyl functional groups but we were just gonna focus on the aldehydes and ketones okay so for example here is a ketone the alpha carbon is the carbon that's adjacent to the carbonyl carbon. So here's your carbonyl carbon right here. There's your carbonyl. And the alpha carbon is the one that's adjacent to it. So there's your alpha carbon and there's your alpha carbon. So you, in this case you have two alpha carbons. And hanging off your alpha carbons are alpha hydrogens. So let's just label this as an A. I mean it looks like a little fish, okay? The alpha, how they draw the alpha symbol. And then you have, in this case, you have alpha H is hanging off of it okay it's gonna get messy so that's a basic uh, way of looking at alpha position alpha H's alpha carbons okay again alpha carbon is the carbon adjacent to your carbonyl carbon in this case you have two one two um, and alpha H's alpha hydrogens are the one that are hanging off of your alpha carbon so here's our alpha carbon those are your alpha H's, okay? So a quick little review of the alpha positions and stuff like that, okay? Um, so let's get started, get right into this reaction, okay? So the first thing you want to do when you guys do this reaction, again, it's really straightforward. All you do is identify in, in your starting material, you draw all your alpha H's, and then replace them all with your halogen, okay? So first thing you want to do is, you know, label and draw out your alpha H's. So let's look at the first case here. I'm going to draw my alpha H's. In this case, we have two alpha H's there you go okay that's not an alpha H okay that's not an alpha H um, again the alpha H's are the H's that are hanging off the alpha carbon and there's your alpha carbon right there okay so in order for us to draw our product which is extremely easy all we do is draw the same starting material and replace those two H's with bromine since that's the halogen we're working with and we're done 
If you guys remember, when we were dealing under acidic conditions, um, you would look for the alpha position that was most substituted, and you went through all these rules. It was a little bit more complicated. Um, now, on the flip side, when we're dealing with basic conditions, much more easier, extremely easy, okay? So, that's it. Now, we're going to do the same thing for this uh, cyclohexanone, or basically this ketone we have, okay? Um, again, we want to label all of our alpha positions. Um, here's our alpha carbon. Here's our alpha carbon. In this case, we have two alpha H's hanging off this guy. And we have two alpha H's hanging off this guy right here. Okay. Two alpha H's hanging off this carbon, two alpha H's hanging off this carbon, okay? Replace them with the bromine. As simple as that. So our product will look like this. And as you guys have noticed, I've upped my game in regards to the markers. I'm busting out with the colors and stuff like that. Uh, so here we have the bromine, the bromine, the bromine, and the bromine. Super simple, okay? There you have it, okay? That's under basic conditions. So let's uh, take a look at this mechanistically and see how this all works, okay? Um, let me just move this up a little bit. And we're going to look at this very simple um, example that I have here for the mechanism. Let me zoom out just a tad bit. Okay. I must admit, that's pretty nice with the orange and blue. I must admit. Okay, so let's, let's get started, okay? So again, here we're starting off with our with our ketone okay and I've drawn in one of the alpha H's in this case we have actually one two more alpha H's hanging off this carbon and we have three alpha H's hanging off this carbon okay so I'm just focusing on one so there's our alpha H let me actually label this carbon here as our alpha carbon okay so in the first step so first off you guys need to understand that the reason why these reactions typically work is because um, the alpha H's are pretty acidic okay they're pretty acidic okay um, the the intermediate you form from losing an alpha H is very sta it is stabilized. That negative charge that should develop from the H being deprotonated is stabilized, therefore making it very acidic. Okay, um, so in this case, it's easy for you to lose alpha H's. So the first step is the hydroxide ion, because again, this is under basic conditions, it attacks the hydrogen here, the alpha H. As you do that, the bond between the alpha carbon and alpha H is kicked off between the kicked off and onto the position where the alpha carbon meets the carbonyl carbon. So you form a double bond there, and you kick off this uh, double bond onto the oxygen. And the intermediate you form is this right here. Okay, so you form an alkene and you form an O negative. So now from your alkene, the alkene attacks the bromine. Okay, this serves like your nucleophile. There's your electroph electrophilic site you can think of it as that and you break the bond between the bromines and kick it off onto the bromine and you regenerate your carbonyl and there is your halogen now it just replaced your alpha H and now I'm not going to do so basically after that you just repeat the first two steps you do this first two steps again and again and again and again until you replace every single alpha H and then you end up with something like this okay now if you remember the intermediate you form when you lose an alpha H, right, the intermediate you form is something that bears a negative charge, okay? In order for you to lose a hydrogen or for something to be deprotonated, the negative charge needs to be stabilized. That's what makes something extremely acidic, okay? So by putting more bromines onto the starting material, you're helping stabilize that negative charge because it's being spread throughout the rest of the molecule therefore making the molecule more acidic and as you add bromine after bromine after bromine it makes it easier for alpha H's to fall off so the more bromines you add on the more easy for you to lose those alpha H's and that's why the reaction continues and continues and continues until you halogenate it, until you halogenate every single alpha carbon it is a very complex that what I just explained right now is a very complex um, Thing. It's a very, it's kind of, it's hard, it's hard to understand it without an image or you know a picture or anything like that, and me explaining that. Um, so, with that in mind, expect a video sometime in the near future explaining a city. So that's pretty much it. This is the stuff on alpha halogenation under basic conditions. So I wanted to thank you guys for watching this video. 
um, and I hope you guys learned something. I hope this all made sense. And by the way, I wanted to let you guys know that I do really appreciate your guys' feedback. You know, um, whether it's negative or positive, I appreciate both comments, okay? It doesn't really matter to me. So, you know, give me honest feedback. Give me, um, and you know, and criticize me in an honest way. And I really appreciate that, okay? So, you know, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for all the support. And this is Mobile 12 signing out.